And what difference do you think this can make to restaurants? Well, it allows them to really optimize their off-premises business. It allows them to hold their own employees accountable, and it allows them to hold the third-party delivery drivers accountable. It also allows them to save labor um, throughout the day, and especially during their peak hours as they're servicing the off-premises business. The other thing that's important is consumers love to pick up from our lockers. Can you tell me how a sushi making robot works? <laughs> All right. So our focus is to take care of the repetitive work that doesn't necessarily have to be done by a chef's hand. Uh, like as you can see, we got the ASM 865A working in front of you right here. Uh, we got four different programs that you can uh, individually set to, depending on uh, your your whatever menu you serve. We can uh, you can set the length within a millimeter, get all the thickness, and then the compression to your uh, to your liking. It saves a lot of time and some risks for the chef. So imagine, if you will, for the first time in America, one app that restaurant and bar owners get to be able to provide to their customers to be able to show what their lunch specials are, what their happy hours, what time's the game tonight. We're looking to provide the restaurant owner a direct one-to-one -one connection with their customers. So for the first time ever, they'll be able to pull up their phone with the City Cheers Connect portal on it and be able to speak into it and say, hey everybody, the Dallas Mavericks are playing the Golden State Warriors at 7.30 tonight. Come by and join us for $5 drafts of, of Modelo with $5 baskets of mini tacos in the bar. She hit send, oh, I can't wait to see you guys, Debbie the bartender. And she hit send and instantly that pops up onto six or 7,000 people's phones that live or work right in the area. Again, giving them a one-to-one -one direct connection to their customer. You know, we all sit there for five or 10 minutes waiting for our check, ready to get the heck out of there sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now, for the first time ever, you just as soon as they enter the order into the POS system, they tap the express check icon to bridge the ticket to their, to bridge their name to the ticket on the computer. And at that moment, the order just shows right up on your phone. Okay, so great. how nice will it be not having to hand out your credit card or wait for your credit card or lose your credit card at a restaurant or a bar? IBEX is ITW's introduction into the speed oven and rapid cook category. And what we've done uh, here, I can just open the door. Um, what we've done is we have challenged the other, the thought process of conventional cooking and rapid cook. What the other products out there utilize microwave. And what we found in microwave is that it not only turns on and off, but also creates hot and cold spots. It's an inefficient cooking process. So to improve on that technology and the efficiency of the cooking, what we've done is we've changed our energy delivery, not to microwave, but to RF technology. That's radio frequency. So the dock is used for like also item delivery. Okay. So, but one of the great things about it is because of its four legs, it can really maneuver and go into places where like wheel robots just wouldn't be able to. So with its four legs, it can climb upstairs, it can go through like rough terrains. And so we see it as like a way to really uh, still be able to deliver items into ways that would just be so awkward to, or just unfeasible with robots with wheels. And I heard it had some cool features. Could you tell me a little bit about the fun features it has? Yeah, so it's obviously, as you can see, it's it's really fun to see. It's it's uh, exciting robot to have. And so some of the features that it has is like with its camera in the front, if you look at it right there, it's able to like, the feed can be fed into like a security system so that we could be monitoring some things as well. So you can also have like a security application for it. But also in general, just it's it has like um, fun features. You can make it like a wave or kick a ball. So if you have, um, that's it's, great. It has an ability to kind of like kick its leg. So there's like some small little features like that. that if can you want to do. Can we make it do that? Yeah. If you look right there, you'll see that it's repairing. I love that. And there it goes. So it's just like fun little features there here and there. Uh, we combined inkjet printing with 3D printing. Uh, we use only natural extracts, and we have here a few types of natural extracts you can see. Um, yeah, let's, let's zoom in on that. <laughs> here you go. We print on any beverage that has foam. So here we have cappuccinos, uh, we have beer, uh, cocktails, anything uh, that has foam can be used as a canvas uh, okay. to deliver a message to the consumer. Okay, that's pretty amazing. And I hear you're launching new products. Could you tell me a bit about that? Yes, absolutely. would love to. So we are launching two new products here at NRA. Uh, one is the uh, Ripple Maker 2 Pro uh, that has the capability to print with two heads. So if you are a bar that serves both beer and cocktails or a hotel that has coffee in the morning and beer in the evening, 
Uh, you can use the same machine for both of them. Uh, but what we also do with the, uh, two, with the two heads is uh, the ability uh, to print multiple colors on the same drink, so kind of creating more vibrant designs. Okay. Uh, the new machine also has some capabilities for operational speed. So it recognizes automatically uh, the diameter of the cup. All of our machines recognize the height of the cup. Now we recognize the diameter and also centering the cup so you don't need to waste time kind of putting it right in the center. You put it in, you press the button and very quickly it will print. So really in a couple of seconds you can get very high flow of, uh, of um, uh, drinks out. <laughs> yes, I love this guy and let's talk about it. Does he have a name? Yes, we give a name like uh, Bobby. Because in China we call it a bao bao to make you very feel very full, so we leverage it. You know, like a bao bao. Bobby, yes, yes. It's just like your best friend, Bobby. Yeah. Um, so how does Bobby work? Okay, it works like you can uh, let the Bobby to greeting the customer in the restaurant uh, entrance and to say hello, welcome to my restaurant and this is your table, follow me, like that. And then you can deliver the food from the kitchen to the table and we can do the pre-setting for the uh, happy birthday greeting as well. Also, you can assign this guy to do the heavy jobs, repeatable but very uh, efficient job. Joanna, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. We are here to reflect on all the glory of the National Restaurant Association and some of the cool takeaways that you saw. So I know we're not there anymore. We're doing this remotely, which is all good because we actually got to be in person. But what were some of the most innovative, fun, trendy, most beneficial things that you saw at the show? Um, I think that one of the most exciting things that I saw was um, the uh, plethora of different types of robots that we saw. Um, I was kind of expecting it, so it wasn't a surprise. Um, but I think that given the labor shortages and uh, th that restaurants are experiencing, that there was just the entire tech pavilion and other corners of the National Restaurant Association show were filled with uh, different robots that can deliver your food, that can uh, that can be uh, replacements for servers, um, and I just I just thought those are really cool to see in action. Yeah, I, I know we we spoke before the show and we were both really excited about the sushi making robots, which was awesome. But then we actually had a chance to visit a booth that had a robot where you would place an order for a coffee at a kiosk the robot inside of the kitchen that would make the coffee and then it would hand it off to another robot that delivered it to you at the kiosk. There were so many cool things. We saw a robot dog there as well. There was all sorts of neat things. Yes, I think that the the folks that made the, um, the robot dog and also that robot bartender uh, slash barista uh, <laughs> yeah. i think that that was those are really the the sleekest uh robots that we saw um and i i think that'll probably be a couple of years before we see them in uh in more common use but they're really exciting to kind of get a glimpse into the future yeah it's definitely pretty cool being able to almost see into the future and although it's not ready yet you could tell it's right around the corner same thing with like the metaverse type stuff that you've been reporting on lately right Yes, for sure. Um, that didn't the metaverse and NFTs didn't have as much of a presence at the show as I thought. But um, the uh, the keynote speaker Alexis Ohanian from Reddit um, was actually speaking a little bit about the metaverse and where he thinks it's heading. Um, and he thinks that it's that you're going to have to get creative to really stand out uh, within the metaverse, um, and that's not necessarily a given that it will that it will be a great marketing tool. Um, so I think it was a pretty good, it was a pretty interesting reality check uh, for sure. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you so much for hopping on and doing this quick NRA takeaway and stay tuned for more information from Nation's Restaurant News and Create.